Ah, yes, yes. Lady Mappy and Ovales, welcome to the chat. Thank you very much for the glitter, please. Come in, lie down on the couch. It is ready for the, the next session. <laughs> Feel free to take a nap, then fire the missiles! I don't know where that accent was going. Like, halfway through doing it, I'm like, what is this? I don't know. <laughs> Hi, everyone, how's it going? <laughs> I'm still CPC Gamer, but in like a thin disguise. Hope everyone's doing okay. Boy, is it ever Monday. It's a very Monday-ish Monday today. And... I don't know. A lot of people are kind of feeling it today. So I'm not... I'm not gonna like... How's everybody doing? Because... Maybe this is a, a conversation that we have a little later. You were fooled? Amazing. It's I like to imagine that that intro was just me sitting here with a wig and a mustache. And nobody noticed because I was <laughs> doing a masterful voice. <laughs> Incidentally, I love this music. This is, um, this is Mad Monster Mansion from Banjo-Kazooie, but like, Dark Souls version is great. Anyways, let us... Um, oh yeah, white Persian... And I'm stroking the cat, and I'm sitting in my chair, facing the corner, just waiting. Like, that's what I do most of my day. I, I just... Someone's gonna come in, and I will turn, and I'll go, Ah, Mr. Bond. Anyways, Zarkrai, hello. <laughs> and Empirical Woodland, hello to you guys too. Um, these memories are gonna be so shattered, you don't even know. Let's just do a bit of that. So, this is my second stream of this game. Uh, it's not my first playthrough, nor my second. I've played this game a lot. Um, so I'm going to be a lot more open and just here's what the game is doing plot-wise. So with that in mind, quick recap for people who may not know. Um, we play the role of Harry Mason, this chap right here. And he's trying to find his daughter, Cheryl, who's this one right here. But he's dead. And he died 18 years before the game began. And the Harry that we see wandering around Silent Hill is Cheryl's imagination trying to, to process this terrible thing that has happened. They are. They'd... So that's something the VHS tapes used to do. Um... They had the Charleston button, where you'd push it, and then everybody on frame would just go yeah da 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 like that. This isn't what. It's a really interesting button to have included. I don't know why. From the girl. This isn't what it looks like. Stop talking. What have you done? She was in an accident. I didn't do this. Accident? Shut the hell up. You've been feeding me bullshit all night. You bastard. I didn't. Shut up. I know you're not Harry Mason. And, like, sp speaking of um, VHS technology, this is more or less where we finished the game or the stream last time. But it kind of got wound back a little bit. Just like a VHS tape did. Like, you stop it, and then it went back a little bit. Oh, the, v the, the effects were loud. Um, Zarkari, I'm very sorry. Hang on. Let us do... A bit of that. Right, hopefully volumes should be... Whoop, there we go. Hopefully volumes should be a lot better now. And, um... Everything should be fine. I say that, we've got a long nightmare sequence coming up. And I'm... I'm, I'm less great at this one. As a reminder, my notes for this one are mostly straightforward. So... Hey, you got me. Oh yeah, and these guys have to load in a thing at a time. Because it hadn't done it previously. Because I uh, just loaded this. So while we're going for a quick wander, I'll uh, let you in on something like a little, little bit of a behind-the-scenes secret. Um, when I was doing like solo Let's Plays on YouTube, Every series had an unconventional naming 
uh, theme. So like, um, Wario Land 1. <clears throat> every, every video was named after a piece of music related to money in some way. So like, cash rules everything around me by the Wu-Tang Clan. Um, I was exceptionally proud of what I did for Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Also, how are we doing with, with volume? Are we, are we good now? Is good? Um, so yeah, exceptionally proud of what I did with Shattered Memories. Because, um, pick it up, pick it up! Oh no! It begins already! <laughs> Um, Criddle, hello. Well, you, you, nothing's happening. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. This is a demo. This happens for a very good reason. See? Check it out. Everything's fine. Um, I know where the exit is. Thank you very much. I just need to get there. Um, so yeah, the era of quirky Let's Play titles. Very proud of what I did with Shattered Memories, though. So episode one was called Cold Open. And I think the second one was Home Sweet Home. And it went on like this. And just looking at the episode names, there was nothing that necessarily linked them all together. Unless you looked at the first letter of each official title when they, it, it spelled out Cheryl is the patient. Did I steal that from Dead Space? Yes, I did, but I'm still very proud that I was able to do that. And that the episode titles made sense, even in context, and it was related to what happened in those episodes. It was pretty cool. All right, excuse me. I'm gonna beeline right for that flare. Thank you. Right. And now, I'm safe. It took a fair amount of planning, I will admit. Um, the way I did it, I recorded the whole thing. Recorded the entire series. And after I had done that, I figured, right, I've got... What is that, 18 episodes or whatever it was? What secret message can I hide in this... Climb up, please. There you go. And that ended up being the one that I went for. Is it this door? Yes, it is. So there's two doors that that bird is pointing at. And I generally always go for the wrong one. But this is good. We're fine. And after that, yes, we're fine. This is where we need to be. After that brief delay at the start, everything is fine. I mean, in regards to how I did it, it was a case of you get to a good stopping point after like 15, 20 minutes. And you come to realize, like when you're familiar with a game, you're like, oh yeah, there's like a really long dry sequence coming up. So maybe... Maybe we uh, we pause for a little bit, and that's where we start the next episode. Or, you know, something cool's coming up, so we... Like here, we go, oh man, how do I solve this puzzle? I'll have to come back next time and find out. That sort of thing. Are you, uh, gonna be home when we get back? Sure. Sure. No, she's fine. Can I have some bubble gum? Oh, uh, sure. Here. She wanted some gum. It's hardly spoiling her. Wait. No, I don't want those colors. I want my favorite colors. What are your favorite colors? Mom knows. I'm sure she does. You hear that? Yeah, well, she won't tell me. The mascot? The cartoon bird? Okay. Like this, sweetie? Yes. So as before, what you're supposed to do is head back into the mall to find the statue of the bird. But because I've got 
the, the answer written down over here, I can just do it. Um, we can shake the gumballs, which, again, I'm convinced is not an actual thing. I've never seen a gumball machine do this. And there we go. Once we have the same four colors as the, the two can speak, the door opens. Now we can go through. Save some for later. I'll keep this one for mom. That's a great idea. Come on. Last one of the escalators is it. Also, I'm pretty sure that by doing it that way, I've kind of slanted myself towards uh, the bad ending. Oh my, you, you put those down. Thank you very much. I'm pretty sure I've slanted myself towards the bad ending. Like, not enough to get it, because I didn't go outside and check on the bird, but I just solved the puzzle. Pretty sure this is the same as before. Let's find out. Hey girls, welcome back to Toluca Mall, home of the experience. Whatever you're looking for, we have it here. The latest fashions, the greatest salons, top eats, and the latest movies. Feel like a princess for a day, every day, here at Toluca Mall. And so I expo- Zakrai, I'm not slanting towards any particular ending, I'm just... The wood- was this here before? I don't- I don't remember there being a wood shop here before. The problem child in question is Cheryl. How's that? Also, um, I'm going to call out myself right about now when I went, Oh, dang, you can tell it's a Japanese-developed game. It's not. This was developed in England, and I know dang well this was developed in England. <laughs> um, but the chicken still says goo for some reason. The Zarkrai has redeemed show and tell. So, what are we going to do? I'm going to go into the pet store and I'm going to do a quick couple things in here because there's a couple things that I always forget while I'm in here I need one that looks just like this it's a present we got lots of breeds I, I can recommend uh... no, no 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 I need one exactly like this it's a present okay okay come take a look over here So the first thing that I usually miss is uh, this lad right here. Reminder, we are doing uh, a bit of UFO hunting in this game. And there we go. You got nine. Almost there. I think she is one of them. And that, Yeah, I mean, wouldn't you just chill out in an empty fish tank? I would. And there is also, yeah, this guy. A lot of people miss this one. Because it's, like, you basically have to turn backwards in order to get it. And it's, uh, Memories Undeveloped, which is a roll of film. Um, and this is... 35 milliliter for, milliliter, millimeter for color prints. Oh, look at that. 
Um, so yeah, this is kind of relating to how Cheryl didn't get the chance to develop her own memories of her father, because that's what a lot of the mementos relate to. Um, Lady Mappy, I will get to that point shortly, because Harry's just going to look at the ceiling for a bit as I aim my controller up and away. Um, because we're kicking off the stream a little early today, Zarkrai, he's got bitten by the bug and he's eager now, looking at show and tell, which means I get to click this button. Yeah, look at that. Today's show and tell is... Aw, it is a little sleepy figure of my melody from Sanrio. And this is a current capsule toy series that's going on in Japan. A friend of mine visited Japan. They got back actually a couple days ago. And they were like, hey, I, I brought this back for Tiny Child, like you asked. And I got this badge for Beep Salt's Kid. And I got this little Gashapon machine. I don't... Well, character. I wish I had a Gashapon machine. My goodness. <laughs> but no, the, the current line is Sleepy Sanrio characters, and I got my Melody. And that's the one you want, because she... Right? If you use the My Melody amiibo card in Animal Crossing, you get a character who says Pound Cake all the time, and every time, it reminds me of my friend... Mmm, Pound Cake, who keeps showing up in this stream, and I love her very much. So I'm glad that I got my melody, that's the one that you want. And that is today's show and tell, right out of the gate. Thank you very much for redeeming Zarkrai, thank you very much for continued watching. Let's get back to the game. And actually, let's do um, another little bit of show and tell. Because, I mentioned this in the last stream, and I wasn't prepared for it, but I am now. There is a bug in I think it's only really been reported in the Wii version the PS2 PSP version is a lot more stable a disappearing act hello hello just in time for show and tell and um well another bit of show and tell related to this game so there is a bug when you go to the visit Lisa and I believe this only happens if you have watched her change. Again, it's a rare bug, so we don't have a great deal of data on it. But basically, Lisa steps out of her room next to herself. And it's terrifying. Because why are there two of you here? Why does the game immediately crash? I don't know. I don't like it. But that's what that bug looks like. And uh, I got a picture of it for you. Please enjoy. Alright, back to the game. Alright, come up. There we go, there we go, right. Wii Remote is all back together. Now, what are we doing, like, notes-wise? Okay. Right. I heard that. Someone's getting knocked around back there. Store managers and retail staff. It's been another great month at Toluca Mall, but we're not stopping yet. The job of providing the perfect shopping experience is never done. This month, we are focusing on fun. Random mystery shoppers will be deployed to ensure that each store in the mall is focusing on this key part of the experience. Make your store an exciting place to be. After all, shopping is about having fun, and it's a hobby that's just about that just about everyone can enjoy. When people are having fun, the profits look after themselves. Stores who fail to satisfy our mystery shoppers will be contacted by the brand manager. Keep up the good work. Anything over here? Can No. Okay, cool. Um, maybe they're planning on beating up Harry. It's possible. Um, one of the... One of the iterations of that scene, if you do spy on her, she will come out and say, I thought you were a nice guy. Get out of here. You don't get to hang out with me anymore. Every little girl's dream. 
uh, and one of them, she's like, I caught you peeking, I don't mind, everything's good. Right, hang on. This one requires like a, a degree of finesse, which is tricky. Because as good as the Wii Remote is at like rotating, precision rotating, less so. Come on. Yeah, there we go. This is my flying lizard. And this... Is it down there? Yes, it is. Right. You can just about see on the badge there, it says Lost World Terry, like the pterodactyl. But, this is a reference to the first game. Because Alessa's favorite book was The Lost World. And she was afraid of the, the pterodactyls in it. And that's why the first game had the flying monsters in it. And now you know. Is that creepy? Yeah, that creepy headless doll is still here. I don't like that. Let's go. And only $255. Is that good for what this is? I don't know. I feel like it's a little small for a $255 train set. Although I suppose if it comes with a diorama, that'd be pretty cool. I don't know. Anyway, this crash has allowed us to proceed forwards. Let's, uh, again, this is a recurring theme, and I think we got one, maybe two more of those before we end the game. And that goes back to the major plot, like we mentioned earlier. Stand on the right. That's how that goes. Walk left, stand right. I don't know where I learned that. But it, it's something that I know. Don't mind me. I'm just going to like do a bit of that. Get some points. Harry has nothing to say about it. Do you know how hard it is to pose a mannequin like that? They have to come with, like, specially built-in raised arms. You can't just do that. Like, I... I've had mannequins. And they mostly just stand there being creepy. You can't pose them like that. Unfortunately, we get no answers from Rochelle. Hey, I got those mannequins from a, a closing down... A, there you go. A closing down everything must go sale. And I was going to use them for work. Look what... I knew it. Look what I got. I named him Dylan. He is the cutest puppy. So silly, he keeps chasing his own tail. What a nice pick. Dylan is more... Of a a, a, a a basset hound name than what was it last time? Holly. Dylan is a lot better. Now, previously, uh, we went this way through the gift card shop, but this time, do you actually comment on how creepy this bird looks? <laughs> Our old friend Tuki. Nope. Okay. Cool. Well, anyways, this time around, we're gonna go this way into the hair salon. There's a very clever puzzle on... That is really creepy looking. Look at you. Anyway. Um, 
It's one of those weird things, like, I know what the solution is. Unlock somewhere else. Will I do a third playthrough where I beeline for the bad ending? Um, I hadn't intended. I actually kind of have the next game picked out. But we'll, we'll come to this. There you go, that's what you have to do. Code, one, seven, eight, nine. Bonus points, this appears to have been written from the inside of the mirror. That's kind of spooky. I'm just going to go do this before I forget it. There we go. And what are the other two? I believe this is randomly generated. Um, one of the three mirrors has this love heart with an arrow through it. Click! Hello, hello! And that one was drawn there, like, properly. And then this one... Says... I hate my face. And that's really, really sad. And, like, I kind of get why it'd be there. Because, you ever had your hair cut when you have to sit and look at it in a mirror? And you just look at yourself in the mirror and you're just like, oh no. What am I even doing? And then, like, when you're done with the haircut, you, you actually feel fine. And it generally looks pretty great. So, previously, can I... Which is the thing to turn that off? Is it you? That one, there you go. Right. Oh. <laughs> it turns it back on when you come into the game. This is Exhibit A, and this is a bloodied knife. And knowing what we know about what's coming up shortly, this is the knife that Cheryl used to stab the security guard. And we also found one... A little earlier in the game where it said, I think it was all stories end in death. That is related to that. Yeah, I got the afternoon off. Those, uh, those mall marketer goons were all over the store taking photos. They had, they had a bunch of stupid models pretending to be customers. <laughs> Happy families, these uh, smiley, smiley moms, dads, and kids. And you know the customers we get in are not that good looking. So, kind of going on what you guys are saying there, um, it's not necessarily that the game is marking you up or down. It wasn't intended for there to be a right or wrong answer to basically any of this. It's just a case of it's skewing you towards this answer or that one. Or this ending or that one. Or here's what you've unlocked based on your conduct. And so it goes on. Hey, can I process that thing over here? Can I proc you through a wall? No, I can't. We thought of that. Right. Um, yeah, I can't process the thing over here, which is unfortunate. But what we can do is we can go over here and actually go over to this display. And uh, we'll see what it says. Another day of quality jacking. <coughs> Ignore that. Today I bagged myself. <laughs> Candy, memory cards, two CDs, bottle of tequila, pair of jeans, cigarettes. Saw that dopey guard again. Let him see me smoking in the no smoking area. Too chicken shit to tell me to stop. Man, I, I try my very best to be nice and not, like... Oh, that's sweet. Yes, it is. I try my very best not to, like, cough or yawn or the like into the mic, but, like, I feel like I milked that one a little too long, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, ex talking about uh, theft and literally nothing else. I don't know what you could possibly be talking about. 
Anyway, look at this figure. Hydrate. I'm going to answer this phone call and then hydrate. Good shout, out, Wales. Sir, can you describe the emergency? Who is dead? Malcolm, there's a security guard here. You didn't even see it coming. She, she, she had a knife and she just pulled it out and cut him. There must have been an artery or something. Is Malcolm breathing? Can you find a pulse? They tried to help her. Even afterwards, he, he, he said to me, it, it's not her fault. Oh God, that was the last thing he said. Said that that's the end of Cheryl's adventures with the uh, security guard. Also, check it out. It's basically called photographic memory. Like, the thing Cheryl is not expressing right now. Moving right along, let's go to the cinema. I think this is a really well-designed area, because, like, look at this... This very specific fuchsia and cyan, this is what scummy cinemas look like in the 80s. And it's just remained like this. I like that. Right, are you going to say the thing now? Please say the thing. Look, it's Grady. Some real classics. Yeah, he recognizes Gradius. Just like the Yu-Gi-Oh card. Thankfully, you can only win this. I'm so glad it's not like a Yakuza-style actually actually do the crane game thing, because I couldn't do that. I'm so bad at crane games. Um, but this is the modern Prometheus. That being the subtitle to the book Frankenstein. Obviously, this is uh, Frankenstein's monster. Uh, or Adam, if you will. This conversation came up literally in my local friend group group chat today but it was about something else <laughs> anyway the reason frankenstein is here um this goes back to something that kaufman says in his big ending speech where he's like basically cheryl has created a frankenstein creation of memories patched together there's not an actual person it's just constructed out of pieces. Impressive stats. Look at this 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 quality of the resolution on this texture. I'm so amazed like the Wii is able to show really like high definition text like that. I shouldn't be because it's just text. But there you go. Right, now this... Gets me every time. That one... This one is particularly loud. So, apologies, Zakurai. Um, And again, this is the bit that... Pretty consistently creeps me out. So let's... Let's see what we get this time around, shall we? Hey, look, it's us! How nice. And we are... Nope. No idea what that's about. But it was a picture of us. Oh, Wales is... You've lost power? Is everything okay? Is this related to the ongoing winter troubles? Miss you, Harry. Easy to forget how good you make me feel, but not tonight. XXX? Dahlia. Three X's? The work of a madman, that text right there. Well, I mean, as, as long as you know what the issue is, and it's not like, now you gotta move house or anything. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. It, it is sleeting, snowing, and hailing. When I said that this 
is just typical typical Michigan weather. I was I was not kidding. Right. Check it out heaven sent. It's just like like heaven's night. Do you get it? Like the place from the Silent Hill too. Is it this bit? It is this bit. So for some reason, that is way more scratchy looking on uh, the PS2 version. Possibly to make it easier to see. We hit something. Oh, shit. What is it? It's... Oh, shit. What do I tell her? Man. Tiny child Cheryl cannot catch a break. <laughs> Yo, is it like Windows 3.1? I don't know. So, the display in the pawn shop over here changes depending on what, uh, what your internal stats are. And, uh, would you believe... We've, we've got a pretty high drug and alcohol score. So here it is. That's why that's there. No, no, click, click, look, look. Pawn shop is different. It's the other one. So, these things have changed. This one's randomly generated. Um, also, fun thing... I am genuinely upset that I will never get to see a dodo. I think they'd be pretty cool. But like, no, we had to hunt them for extinction. Um, and there is also... Somewhere... Yeah, you. I see you. You made it to ten. How long have they been here? I've locked her in the cellar. Uh, but also, yes, Criddle, please come back. Click wants you to make mighty, like, cakes and buns, and I just like hanging out with you. So, there you go. Now we have a key! Should we be doing this? Hey, I am always down for... Hunting UFOs, thank you very much. Crimson Albedo, hello. Welcome on in. Um, and Disappearing Act, yes, this one is randomly generated. It's this one or a peacock. I think there is a third thing. Same deal with a couple of these other items. Like, I think this could be shoes or handbags, for example. Now, if we head this way... We can grab this little lockbox, which has We Ouroboros. Does this one have anything inside? Yes, it does. It says, look, love is a hungry drug. And Ouroboros is the, I believe, Greek concept of a snake eating its own tail, representing the concept of infinity. In this case, the story just keeps on going. Also, check it out. Mason. Do you not feel like commenting on that, Harry? No. Okay. Do you know it could be related to Alice in Wonderland? Um, it would make sense. That's one of the things that they, um, they talk about in the original Silent Hill one. There is a Carol Street, for example. I think that's in two. Cheryl? Sweetie, is that you? You've been gone for so long, I started to 
worry. Sweetie? Who are you? Harry? Harry? How do you know me? Where's Cheryl? Still at the lighthouse, maybe. Lighthouse? What are you doing here, Harry? Uh, looking for Cheryl. Isn't this my house? Who are you? You look really good. Who are you? We're soulmates, you and I. The richer, the poorer. In sickness and in health. You're my wife? <laughs> So I'm pretty sure that old Dahlia, there's three models of them, uh, one for each of the younger models, and that's not actually what she looks like. It is like Cheryl making it worse than it actually is, because it's generally Dahlia does not come off favorably in these flashbacks. Like even when Harry is the bad guy, she's not much better. So, the last time I came here, I went, oh man, Silent Hill 2, am I right, chat? But, like, I didn't actually elaborate on that, I just kind of assumed that everyone would be on the same page. So, for those of you who don't know, maybe haven't played it, uh, first of all, you should, it's genuinely one of the best games ever made. But this scene is a direct nod to a part in Silent Hill 2, where you enter a building, you head down an impossibly long set of stairs, and ultimately jump down a pit at the end of it. And it's a little unfair to say that this game is a direct copy, because Silent Hill 2, the sequence in that game, like, it's got its own set of meanings, it's like, Alcoholism and depression and like clocking out of work before you should do if you follow me. Um, whereas this game's got its own set of meanings behind that. And this one is more to do with. Well, we'll get to it. When we get to the bottom of this pit, we'll get to it. Because first off, we're going to jump. Because there is something to be said about this sequence. Um, if this is the one that I think that it is. Look, it's little memories of Harry and Cheryl. Shattered, perhaps. Um, so yeah, this is a dream sequence. Um, this is Cheryl falling asleep. And we're falling with her, literally falling asleep. And I believe it's going to be the next section. Okay. I'll put a pin in that. We'll get to it. Um, and the reason this is the dream sequence, or one of the ways you can tell this is a dream sequence, is because this is one of the more fragmented nightmare chase sections. Oh, this is so much easier with sound. First stream I did of this, no sound on the radio. I just had to fumble around this entire massive warehouse sized room to find the hot spot. And there it is. And then this bit is also related to something that Kaufman talks about in his big speech at the end, where we're going to keep coming back to that room and we're going to keep watching the same tape on the same TV over and over and over again, because that's something that Cheryl does. She watches the videotape to see her dad 
winds it back to the start and watches it again so she can see her dad. Like, you saw it at the, um, on the main menu. When you come to start a game, that's how it begins. But like, oh no! <laughs> but yeah, this sequence in particular is... You start off in the middle of the chase sequence. Also, Crimson, thank you very much for the lurk. Enjoy working as best as one can. That was incredibly quick. I've done really well with that both times. That's randomly generated. You start off in the middle of a chase, and after a certain number of rooms, you just end up here. And that's one way that you can kind of tell this is a dream, because... Like, if you've ever seen the movie Inception, they talk about it in that, where you never remember the start of your dreams. You just are in school without your homework, or whatever you're dreaming about. And that's what's going on here. You don't fully understand how you, you're back where you started, having been in the middle of a sequence. You just... You just are... And again, we're watching the tape again. Theme of Laura is so good, isn't it? It's really, really good. See, it's the main menu. And it's us. Oh, also, this reminds me. Um. Oh, yeah, if you've not seen Inception, you probably should. Maybe twice. Because it's a lot, that movie. <laughs> but it's really good. Um, Lady Mappy, you brought up uh, Cheryl in Dead by Daylight being a counselor. This is kind of related to the Book of Memories. A.K.A. the one that nobody played. Um, oh yeah, here it is. So this is like... It's a film strip, because we just came from the cinema, and we're watching that film again. But that one, that's Harry in the snow at the start of the game, having fallen out of his car. And we're back at the start. And there's Harry again, and we're back at the start. And the memory of Harry having died in a car crash is becoming more and more pervasive, at least as we go through this sequence... Disappearing, yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> Practice it. Make sure you emphasize the right syllable. Alright, now we feel our way around this maze with the invisible walls. And away we go. Um, so yeah, the I believe Dead by Daylight focuses a little bit on the story of the Book of Memories. Because what happens in that game is... A lot of characters from throughout all the Silent Hill games, and some new ones, are all... They receive a mysterious phone call. Essentially, I know what you did last summering them into... Pick it up, pick it up. Thank you. Into having to go to Silent Hill and... Explore Infinity Floors! I don't know. I haven't fully played it. I don't know what the gameplay loop is. I just know the plot. I know that the mailman's in it. And he's one of the best characters in anything from Silent Hill. Which way around are we? This way around. So the trick for this one, as before, you find the door that's been frozen over. Or that is the most frozen over. And you head towards it. There we go. We made it to the bedroom. Safely. Asterisk. <laughs> Cheryl. 
This is your room. But you're not in it. I still think that's a really, really good sequence. It's very, very well framed. I love it. Hello. You know, I think we're getting somewhere. We're all tied up in this marriage thing. Marriage worked a lot better when we didn't live so long. We have phrases Ooh, like whiskey. the honeymoon is over to remind us. I know what that one is as well. Is sour. But I can't remember off the top of my head. I think I'm being cynical. Divorce does that to you. Come on. You think marriage can really last? So, brief reminder again for what we were doing or what is occurring in this section. Um, the game is keeping track of four... I'm going to do that because I'm just going to keep looking back to my screen and drifting upwards. Um... The game is keeping track of the player's attitudes towards four major elements. You've got family, friendliness, sex and sexuality, drugs and alcohol. And uh, this section right here, the section on marriage, or marriage, <laughs> uh, this influences your family and sex and sexuality scores, depending on your answers. Um, it is also designed to set up the relationship between John and Michelle when you meet them. Should a couple stay together for the kids? Do you think it's a bad idea to marry young? I, I'm just. Do you think sex becomes stale? Answering the, I, I believe the opposite to what I did last time, just to, you know what? Just to see what happens. You being such an expert on marriage, you're going to ace my matchmaker test. Why are you so sarcastic, dude? <laughs> on the table are six pictures. All you have to do is sort them into three married couples. Now, there is also a second little thing going on with this game, specifically this section, and that is that whoever Miss, I think, Purple Blouse is paired with, that's what John looks like. So if I do that one, John should look like that. Does the game let you sort the photos into gay couples? It does. However... That skews you towards the, uh, the the fake ending, where it assumes that you're not taking this seriously. I'm not okay with that, because why wouldn't you necessarily want to sort these guys into gay couples? You can do that. What, what was the, the quote? Some people are gay and that's okay. Oh, well, that's alright. Also... If you happen to put this one in um, a gay relationship, it is whoever is beside her is the one that John looks like. So, like, there's a cool grin over here. But no, we, we should get the red one. <laughs> yes, click. All people are gay, and that's okay. Every one of us. Okay. Now tell me which of those couples are still together. <laughs> I'm joking. You know I'm just trying to provoke you, right? Oh, let's keep going. We're really making progress here. I mean, lumberjacks are fine, I guess. Harry? Fantastic fashion Harry? sense. Were you dreaming? Are you okay? What are you doing here? This place is... Your home, right? I saw the photos of you in the corridor, you and your family. Cheryl isn't here. I'm sorry. The woman said Cheryl was at the lighthouse. The lighthouse closed down years ago. No, I need to go there. John and I can drive you there. We'll take the lake road. Thank you. Click if you're not wearing. So you're Harry. John. 
Well, don't mind me. I'm sure you two have lots of catching up to do. See, it's the red and black guy! <laughs> Click, if you're not wearing that lumberjack sh shirt on stream tonight, I'll be very disappointed. Nice car you got, John. Make it happen. I always wanted one of these. But when Cheryl was born, we graduated to the family car club. Trunk space wins out over engine size. I'd swap the car for a family any day. Though I'm happy enough with just John for now. Cut it out, Michelle. Huh? It's embarrassing. Uh, I'm not embarrassed. Don't mind me. This isn't how... A disappearing act. Are you suggesting he was drinking and deriving? Fault. I Nothing mean, to do with Harry. That was great. <laughs> Us. I wanted to make things clear. I wanted to do things right. What are you saying? This reunion, this weekend. I wanted to come see you to talk things through. Talk? About our relationship? Michelle, there is no relationship. We can't do this. Not now. Jim. If not now, when? Where? Christ, Michelle, I've been trying to do this for months. But you don't want to hear it. Now we have a witness. Maybe you'll listen. You're not thinking right. It's been too long since we've been together. No. No, Michelle. I was hoping to do this right, but I need to do it. We've been running on empty for a long time. Living on fumes. It isn't a relationship. It's a courtesy. I still love you. It can't be over. It is. You don't love me. You love the John in your head. That's an important line. I can't listen to this. I can't do this anymore. I like how the, the game sort of locked me into my seat until that conversation ended enough that they have left and I can't, I can't really chase after them. So, where is it? Is it you? It is you. Poetry as precise as geometry. How can I turn the Wii Remote to show that off properly? There you go. Everything one invents is true. As in... Cheryl has been imagining this whole thing and believes that it is true. And then, like, that. There we go. Um, so, yeah, Lady Mappy calling it again. Harry has once again walked away from the car that has come to a sudden dramatic stop in the snow because Cheryl won't have anything bad happen to him. At least storyline-wise. Always on my mind was important enough that a separate song on this soundtrack is called that. It's one of the Mary Elizabeth McGlynn tracks. And it was one of the things that got teased to the press. When they were like, oh, can you give us any clues about this game? And it's like, so, what links Elvis and the Pet Shop Boys? And... I don't know, Vera Lynn, whoever the other one was. The answer being, they all recorded that their song. Sorry about last night. I was upset. You were upset. I get it. Says Dahlia. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to stand here a second and uh, take a listen to some of this audio in the sewers. Or at least as best you can. I appreciate it's very, very quiet. So, it's yes, it's running water, um, but it's very specifically meant to sound like the green lion enemies from the first game, which you found in the sewer. And this brings to mind one of the biggest problems in this game, to my mind, and that is you are essentially never in danger, which is kind of a problem for a horror game. Also, I think I pointed this out last time, we got this gross fish. 
which has a band in it. It says a happy bond. And ah, oh, dang it! I didn't mean to saw that. I meant to zoom in. Anyway, the band says "Sweetie" on the inside. Because that's what Harry calls Cheryl, do you see? But yeah, um, the only time you ever see monsters is in, like, the nightmare sections, and they are very clearly signposted. Cheryl? Go away! No, sweetie. Go away! And, like, it is to the point that... Oh, Wales. Brilliant human being. Love this person. Doesn't really watch the horror streams. She's not a fan. But she's been hanging around for these. Because it's very obvious that... Okay, this section, maybe go make a cup of tea. Because this is when the nasty stuff's happening. So I kind of feel like there needs to be something else for this game. And I'm not entirely sure what that would be. By the way... UFO. That's 11. She wants food, but we know they don't eat like us. The lies. There is one kind of enemy per playthrough, but they do sort of change as you go through the game. So I guess that's how that is justified. Um, but the thing is, I'm not entirely sure, like, what else would be in the game. Like, maybe some more men mementos. I don't know. Although, with that said, good segue time. Um, this is something that was going to be dealt with, or something that we kind of touched on in one of the game's original builds, or the original ideas for the game. I was going to go over here and uh, say, speaking of mementos, let's grab Memories Untaken. Cool stuff. Um, so yeah, one of the original ideas for this game, after... The first one was Brahms PD. We mentioned that. When that didn't pan out, the second idea, it was called Silent Hill Cold Heart. And I'm going to tell you that after I answer this phone call. There we go. And yes, the idea for the game, Silent Hill Cold Heart. And the idea was, you were, I have a visual aid for this one. Um, you played as um, a psychology student whose name was Jessica, who we have concept art of that. Is it this one? It's that one. This is what she looked like. And you were going to play as this character. And the idea was you were stuck in Silent Hill during a blizzard, again, like what we're doing here. And there was going to be a constantly ticking down gauge for food and warmth. And the idea was that Jessica would have to, like, scavenge around Silent Hill to find food and clothing, because obviously it's getting, like, wet and ruined with the weather. And that was going to be the game. And that one didn't pan out because generally the thought was it was... Konami didn't like the idea behind Brahms PD. Cold Heart was kind of similar to it. Um, got shelled. Didn't go anywhere. I think I'm looking someplace else for the next thing on my notes. So, hopefully we're good to go. Do you know what I'm going to do? Just to be on the safe side. Let's save our game. And so, yeah, finally the decision was um, to do an idea that Konami had already suggested because they they really, really liked the other game that Climax had did, which was Silent Hill Origins, which was kind of a retelling of Silent Hill 1. Uh, featuring Travis Grady, who is, like, suddenly the most important character in Silent Hill. Because he keeps showing up in games, and he's in the movies. They've retroactively put him in, like, Silent Hill 2, of all things. 
But yeah, Konami really liked that, so hey, why not do a retelling of Silent Hill 1? So that, that's, that's what you got. Also, it's kind of a semi-canon sequel to the bad ending of Silent Hill 1. Brilliant. This is also brilliant. It's, it's the lighthouse. Everything is now pointing us towards the lighthouse. Go to the lighthouse. Lady Mappy, you're kind of right. Um, because <laughs> the other decisions were like, so I mentioned this a little bit in the original stream. The, the first pitch for the game was a shooter set in the Silent Hill universe, which isn't really what the series is about. There is a game like that. That's what the arcade game is. Uh, but again, who really? knows about the arcade game. Me. <laughs> Journeys end in lovers meeting, says your diamond heart. Oh, and it's doing that cool holographic reflective thing, like from Pokemon. Yeah. And obviously that's how the game ends. You meet someone you love very much, and then everything ends. Um... Might be a little on edge that I've missed something. Probably haven't. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. We're good. Everyone's good. Let's go to Annie's bar. Alright, that's a surprise. Hey. So, it's over. there are some versions of this scene where Michelle is drinking a bottle of booze. I was in love with an idea of this person. But that wasn't John. Yeah, what a waste. But here she has cake. You know, I should have realized when he said he wanted to be a lawyer. And like, really stereotypical tablecloths. Look at that. Yeah. You'll need a boat to cross the lake. They often moor at the jetty behind the amusement park. Head through the alley out back. You'll see. I used to go there with John. I doubt it's as exciting as I remember it. Are you sure you want to go, Harry? That's all I got. Something feels wrong. She's there. I know it this time. I'll get my answers. You might not like them. That dress doesn't look good. Sat down! It's fine! We're getting deep in it now. I can almost taste it. All this talking, and we still haven't touched on the sex thing. That's what you're thinking. Aren't all psychiatrists supposed to be obsessed with sex? It's not us. It's you. You're obsessed with not having sex. Come on. Let's have some fun. See the pictures on the table? I want you to divide them up. The ones you think are a sexual symbol go on the left. The ones that aren't, the right. You think that's bad, Lady Mappy? One of his lines there, based on how you, the player, are behaving, is... Um, you're obsessed with sex. When you're not having it, you're thinking about it. That's one of his lines. So, like, yes, he he's... He's got the scoops. So, this one, you can probably tell this one is sort of slanting towards your sexual score or away from it. The punchline being, each of these images has a violent image on the reverse. It's so like this one is a skull, and then this one is a noose. I think that one's a knife. Uh, that one we got last time, that's a poison apple. That's another skull, and we're going to put you over there on that side. And so this is going to give, like, somewhat, um, somewhat slant my points towards the sexual side of things. 
but not too much because I did also put these over here. And as before, if you put everything on one side or the other, Kaufman tells you off for that. He's like, will you stop messing around? Good. Of course, the constant partner of sex, the other side of the same coin, is death. A car crash, you say? It's almost like I planned that. Sex is death. It's a leap into the void. The great loss of self. The tiger in space. A plea it's for annihilation. Defying the laws of gravity. Sex is to deny death. It's, it's a racing car passing by like Lady Godiva. It's gonna go, go, go. There's no stopping it. You're right, Lady Mappy. He doesn't have a practice. He's just quoting Queen lyrics at this point. see this through to the end having said that uh Kaufman mentions the idea of like sex and death being two sides of the same coin and that kinda is a thing in psychology but that is Sigmund Freud's drive theory from like the 1920s and we've kind of moved on a bit in the last hundred some years. You will see it show up in um, design aesthetics fairly frequently, uh, particularly a little game I may have mentioned called Silent Hill 2. <laughs> Take a shot. Um, but yeah, the, the concepts of Eros and Thanatos are very specifically used very heavily in that game, particularly when it comes to enemy design for example. Um, so that's why all of the monsters are... Um... Hey, check that out. The dragon. This is from the Myths and Legends th um, section in the theme park we're about to go to. Check that out. Um, but yeah, Silent Hill 2, the, the nurse is probably the best example of that. They have ridiculously sexy curves and tight dresses but also they're hideous and trying to kill you it's the notion of attraction and revulsion sex and death and that's where that comes from i think the thing i am looking for is on the other side of this here amusement park so so let's go let's, let's do it So this is one of the things where I think the game shouldn't necessarily mark you down for losing points. Because, like, you come into this room, what is your eye going to be drawn to? I wonder. It, is, it, is it this guy right here? Of course it is. When the game goes, hey, there's a puzzle item over here. Go collect it. <laughs> Thank you for that one note game. I appreciate that. Yeah, there's a lot going on with Silent Hill 2 um, Remake. I've said that I'm tentatively looking forward to it. But there's a lot in that game that only rarely works because it's busted and janky. It's like a dad's job to embarrass his daughter. What are you talking about? Hot dog man! Hot dog man! Hot dog man is the coolest man. Um, so yeah, the... Silent Hill 2 HD version wasn't great voice actor-wise. Um... Because, again, the... the... I'm just gonna pull that again. A lot of what makes Silent Hill 2 
work is the fact that the voice acting is weird because the characters are acting weird because the whole game is weird. Also, I, I skipped over this the first time I played this game. This always shows up when you play the slot machine, the wedding, death, car. I wonder how those three are related. And I just hastily skipped over it. Don't talk about that. Pull the thing again and you win. We win. Eve. That's what Dahlia actually looks like at this point in the game. Uh, we saw a picture of her on the wall when we got to the house. I want to say it was outside Cheryl's room. It was like 15 minutes ago, Andy. Streamer brain. Um, it does say something about that, uh, Lady Mappy, that... Hey, look, a guest in the tunnel making the ride stop. And it's Cheryl. Look at that. But yeah, it, it does say something about um, Cheryl's, like... The mental image of the people around her that... She sees her mother as just this old... Haggard drunk when actually she's just this person It's fine. And again, that's something that Kaufman talks about in his big speech at the end that You've got this whole thing going on. She's fine Which isn't necessarily an idea that I adhere to sometimes people are just awful That's possible It's not ruined. We're just glad you're safe. Those swans pack a mean peck. They do? Yeah, like this. <laughs> That's a pretty good way of running back, that little thing. That's one of the awkward things. Like when you're out and you're with the kid and they just... They get wound up. And then they get wound up that they're getting wound up. And it's like, how do we break this cycle? You just... Be dumb. Ah, yes. I think that's what I'm looking for. This one's mean. Because that one's pretty well disguised. That was like, hey, don't, don't look at me. I'm a lampshade. No, you're not. I'm onto your tricks. Twelve done. My alien wife is playing dead. I know her game. The Zarkrai, welcome back. Hope everything's going A-OK. -okay. Was there a thing over there? No, this is where I always get confused. I keep looking for the dragon over here and then the UFO before I go into the... into the theme park. I got it right this time. Salad and spicy. Sir, are you eating tomatoes? The, the, the extravagance of this man over here. This boat is called the Orpheus. As in... Orpheus and the Underworld. As in... It's a reference to Greek mythology and... Dead. The dead, I should say. Like, crossing the river to get to where you need to be. There you go. Harry, 
I thought you'd turn up. Why? It's party time, and I'm the party queen. Help yourself to refreshments. <laughs> what was that subtitling? It's a boat. It's like a car, but goes on water. <laughs> this baby out into the that gets me every time. Whatever we like. No one to tell us what to do. I need to get to the lighthouse. Well, we can do that too. For a price. My daughter is there. I need to be there. Harry, Harry. Always with the weight of the world on his shoulders. I remember when you were a fun loving guy. We're talking about my daughter, damn it. Okay, okay. That boat line is great, disappearing. It, it's Leslie Nielsen levels of like, it's the bit at the front where the pilot sits. But that's not important right now. I love it. Why won't you take this seriously? Sorry. Cheryl is in trouble. Cheryl is always in trouble. What do you know about Cheryl? Very little. I try not to pry into your family life. You have the same name as my wife. Stop it. Stop it. Can't we just relax for once? That will not help. I was going to say, that was a lot more tastefully shot than the last time, but no, here we are again, just... Watching awkward Wii era models just squished together. It doesn't work very well. Stop it. Stop doing that. Like, you were doing so well, game, and then you weren't. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's just... It's just generally hard to do... Intimacy well in situations like this without it seeming... Just bad and off, and... I, Stalia, got a haircut and aged, like, 20 years, you'll notice. I think it's just, you like, you like, the, the intimate nature of sex and sexuality. You, you're not really supposed to pry into that, I guess. Harry, turn back. I can't. It's too late now. For our daughter's sake. Well, well, Lady Mappy, I don't know the answer to that one. What I can tell you, um, the music here is called Ice, obviously, because, like, everything is, is frozen over. Uh, but also, the idea that everything would be cold and set in a blizzard, that was decided really early on. Hello? This your cute seven-year-old? No, she's she's a ways older than than seven. Anyways, uh, yeah, the the idea to set the game in a blizzard came really early on. That was part of Cold Heart, um, and it's all down to a line that Kaufman has in the first Silent Hill game, where he says to Harry, "And it's snowing at this time of year, like because this is not normal weather. Something is horribly wrong." Also, uh, hi! It's the monsters again! Hate them. Um, these guys are called Raw Shocks. After the Raw Shock Ink Block test. I saw you spawn in. Did you see that one spawn in? I saw it. Um, <laughs> and you've probably noticed that they, they change as the game progresses. Like these guys, they look like cancerous masses or chewed gum. 
and in the previous game, they had bizarre heads that just looked like abstract floating shapes. Uh, but you'll also notice they're not actually attacking me. Uh, because these guys are representative of, like, Cheryl's mind trying as hard as they can to hold on to to the idea of Harry. I think Calvin refers to them as agents of repression in his big speech. Because you'll notice they're holding on to us. And they're stroking our hair. They They love Harry and they want to keep him. But they can't, because none of this is real. Also, um... If you want to score points towards the, the fake ending, you can just sort of stay here and not swim. And you will eventually sink and drown and then you wake up on the shore and, and things continue. So look, there's Cheryl and the teacher. All just memories under the surface as before. And that's... Oh look, it's us. Lady Luna Phoenix, hello, hello. So, I don't think I'm going to get it, but I'm not going to explain what that ending is until I, I get to the lighthouse and I see what ending we get. What's down here? Oh no. Don't, don't think about that. That never happened. That's the whole plot of this game. That never happened. Gotta push on. Uh, but while I'm doing this, um, I have one more piece of art to show you. Are you ready? It's the concept art for what the, the monsters originally looked like while this game was being developed. I'm just going to uh, have Harry do my best to swim to shore. And uh, where is that button? Where's my mouse? There it is. So this is what the monsters originally looked like, like in the concept art stage. So you can see that there's a lot of twisted wreck metal monsters. The one bottom left, that one looks like the car. And like, yeah, actually, that's a pretty good design. Uh, but obviously, didn't go with that one. Kinda gives the game away right at the start when all of the monsters are cars, you know? <laughs> Don't think about it. It's fine. Also, Sybil's crazy. I would not step into the water which is like business shoes on SWAT cop worked better because she at least had the, the big military boots you're not stopping me I'm not here to stop you I didn't have to fish you out of the water did I stop talking you can't talk me out of this I'm not here to stop you I pulled your file at the station I told you that right if you're telling the truth this doesn't make sense but I think you are telling the truth I believe you think you're Harry Mason. Hell, I believe you are Harry Mason. But Harry Mason was killed in a car crash 18 years ago. You want answers? I guess they're waiting in there. That's the lighthouse. Nothing's quite what you expect, is it? First thing tomorrow, I'm gonna hand in my badge. I don't think I'm cut out for police work. Not in this town. Good luck. Thanks. I kind of think that's a nod to, like, Sybil, like, not wanting to work in Silent Hill anymore, but it, she doesn't. She's stationed in Brahms. That's the whole point of the original draft of this game. Anyways, I... I'm going to save my game. Because you never know what's coming up. I'll tell you what's coming up. 
is if you just run away from the lighthouse, I'm not even going to look at that. We're going this way. You can find this guy parked up on the shore. And if you have found all of the UFOs thus far, and you take a picture of this one as well, then uh, that's what gets you the UFO ending. Isn't that nice? Anyways, let's go this way, the direction we're supposed to be going, and find out what's there. Also, knowing that this track samples is that the door, I can that's the only part of this I can hear now. But there it is. It's a clinic. It, it I think actually that that's the first advert you see if you look for it in Silent Hill. Like outside the bar, it might be the lighthouse clinic. I'm not sure. So, this one's pretty obvious what's going on inside in, inside this person's skull, if, if you look inside this person's skull, oh, check it out! It's Harry. Never five get. That's one more than four get. This is going nowhere. So I think that you this part of the game. But you're not listening. This is the point when Harry's running across the lake. Your denial of death, the unfounded guilt, abnormal sexuality, 18 years of denial, a whole universe of fantasy in that thick skull of yours, a skull teeming with agents of repression, blind children clutching photos in the dark, pale freaks goggle-eyed from watching home movies on loop, is a complicated grief, but it's simple, isn't it? A young girl. Her parents don't get along. She blames herself. So I'll cry. This has been a theme basically throughout this Let's Play. <laughs> let's Play. Throughout the stream. The first and second stream. Kaufman, he's not very good at this. What seven-year-old actually knows who their parents are anyway? So she obsesses and obsesses over this fantasy dad propping up her make-believe with scraps. Scraps of a happy life that never was. Scraps of a father who never existed. Wake up! <laughs> Lady Mappy, I could see that. Cheryl's not real, it's just... Projections all the way down. It wasn't my fault. Someone has to take the blame. Forget me. Oh, it's like that one song... Erase me by Nine Inch Nails. Love it. Okay, so, the, um, air quotes bad ending, the fake ending. What happens in that one is, Kaufman does the big speech about how, that was Dahlia, uh, Lady Mappy, yes, the, the, the woman in the pink t-shirt, blue jeans, that was Dahlia. Uh, the actual real Dahlia, and not, as I say, the old haggard one that we saw in the... Good girl for daddy. Go 
get him another drink, will you? Now, give me a damn beer. I wonder I drink with a family like this. And it goes back to what we were saying just now, how... Um, oh, hell yeah! Content claim city! Let's listen to Hell Frozen Rain! Don't actually do that. But you should. Go find it on YouTube. Hell Frozen Rain is like, yeah, see, disappearing act. You're across the way, get just as hype as I am. This is the song. This is the best one. Um... So yeah, the fake ending. What happens is, Kaufman does his big speech, none of this is real, you're not paying any attention to me, Cheryl. And Cheryl basically stands up and goes, that's because it's real, it is real, and you're wrong. And she and Harry leave together, because you're not taking it seriously, you're not there to do therapy, you're there to just, you know, maybe tick a box as part of your parole. But everything's actually real, and, and away you go. And that one comes down to, as I mentioned, it, it's suggesting to the game that you're not taking it seriously. So, do you quickly just flip through all the answers on the forms? Do you do the tests wrong? Do you... <laughs> I don't know why they count it as if you... If you do the relationship test with gay couples, that marks you down. It shouldn't, but it does. Um, and there's a couple of other bits and pieces. There's things like, if you find some of the, the gag phone numbers around town, and you phone those, game marks you down for that. If you... Oh, what is it? So one of them, for example, if you find... The number for like call Tiffany five 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 good times right. If you call that number, that marks you down because that. Come on, dude. Your dad did not just try and pick up random girls in a bathroom. Unless. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that that's that. Um kind of hard to go for that one unless you know that that's what you're going for but yeah what else what else have we got on my notes um so yeah one of my favorite things about this game favorite favorite things is that the things that you see are contextualized by the things that you do so uh, Lisa. Lisa is the best example of this. Um, she has to suffer some terrible trauma. It is the rule of Silent Hill. Um, but depending on the road you take to get there, the exact moment of her death changes kind of wildly. Um, and it's reflected in the story. Uh, Zarkrai. There is no air quotes good ending. It's just the ending that you get. Um... And that was one of the, the the themes for the game, is that there's no real right or wrong answer. Much like psychiatry, there's just your answer. Also, speaking of theme of Laura, here it comes. And there goes the content claim on my video. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Um, the whole Lisa thing. Was Harry some piece of garbage who hated women. Of course he is, because he stalked this woman home from the hospital, poor injured woman even, and he poisoned her with the wrong medicine, and he stood there and he watched her choke. What a dirtbag. Or is Harry a serial womanizer? Well, of course he is, because, you know, he left his daughter in the hospital, went home with the first nurse that he saw, got a bit of a striptease, got kind of cuddly... And if that's the case, she has got to go. And Cheryl's mind, which is what this game is, just removes her from the story in the most direct way possible. Or, and this is my favourite one, because this is the one that we got both times. Um, was Harry perfect? And did he do 
everything he should have done? Did he get everything right only to fail anyway? Just like how Cheryl tried to be the perfect daughter, but the parents' marriage fell apart anyway. That is brilliant storytelling. I love it. And I kind of feel like the game needed a bit more of that. But at the same time, it's really hard to do what do you think it means um, correctly without just coming across as kind of awkward and pretentious. Also, check that out. Joe Romersa wrote this. I didn't know that. I just, I have it attributed in my playlist to Mary McGlynn because she's, she's the singer. I have her autograph up on the wall because she's pretty cool. <laughs> Patient in a few words. Let's go with high energy. I'll take that. I like to think that that's, that's me on the stream. Would it be a stronger game if it wasn't reinterpreting Silent Hill 1? Uh, I do. I do think it would be that. It is certainly one that a lot more people know of and have heard of because it's a Silent Hill game. And that is, um, that that's what the team was going for. Because they made Origins. Uh, but again, going back with what you said, I think Origins would have worked better if it was a slightly different Silent Hill 1 story to the one that we got. Anyways, let's fast forward. Of course I'm going to show off the UFO ending. Come on. <laughs> Do you think I'm going to go through the whole game just to be like, nah, leave it, mate. <laughs> it's... This is one of the best UFO endings, and I love it. That's the last one. You've proven yourself. Meet me at the Lighthouse Clinic. And I think this is the best ending. Best UFO ending, I should say. Um, because it doesn't keep the joke going. If you play the Book of Memories, that has a UFO ending, which is essentially this UFO ending, but for literally every character who has ever shown up in Silent Hill. And I'm like, okay, I get it. He's, he's, he's fine. I don't know why I'm picking that up. There's no benefit to collecting all of those. I just like collecting stuff. So, if you have collected um, all 13 UFOs and photographed them all, you get this ending. This, this is it. After all we've said, all we've discussed, you honestly believe that your father was abducted by aliens? It made more sense when you were talking about cults and demons. This whole town... It's real in a giant spaceship. James? Wrong day again. See you tomorrow, James. One of my couple therapy patients. Haven't seen his wife in a while. <laughs> my mother was a bitch. <laughs> That's the best line in the game. Does that one... And then the next one is, it's like a car, but it goes on the water. That's the best line. I love it. So that's the best UFO ending in Silent Hill. Because, can I skip you? I, I don't, I don't want to get claimed twice. Oh! <laughs> well, I hope everybody really likes Hell Frozen Rain as much as I do. Because now we're going to listen to it again. Let's go. Uh, but yeah, no, the, the Book of Memories, the UFO ending to that is it's basically that. But then, it's like, Lisa shows up again, and then Travis shows up again, and then, 
What's it? Murphy Pendleton shows up again, I guess. Why not? D did you buy the comic books? No. Nobody bought the comic books that tie in with Downpour. It's fine. Um, so yeah, there you go. We, we, we have three endings on the books for Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Um, there is a Silent Hill visual novel, but it is Game Boy Advance, and it's a side story to the first game. You play as a character called Andy, who hangs around with Cheryl, and that's about all I know about it, because I don't believe it was ever properly localized. And yeah, it wasn't in the UFO ending style. It was crunchy Game Boy Advance graphics. Uh, did they get Guy Seehe back for that? They did not. Uh, I believe that's Yuri Lowenthal again. Because it's just one line of dialogue. and I believe the only thing Guy Seehe has done is James and this other game that's just got the entire Silent Hill 2 cast back together again. So, <laughs> he's... Because he's not a voice actor. Like, that's his whole thing. He's just he's just some businessman who showed up to have his daughter audition for the role. Um, and they were like, Hey, American businessman, do you want to be the protagonist? And it works, because he's not an actor, so his cues aren't quite right, and his mannerisms aren't quite right. And that's how Silent Hill 2 works. Um, now you need to know what this other game is and who Eddie played in it. Um, that is a very good question. It is... One... I know that the best friends played it, and it was part of their October Storm of Scariness. I don't know which one. There's like seven to choose from. So, uh, give me a bit. Not on stream. I will find that answer for you, and I'll let you know. And uh, we will find out who Eddie played in that. It wasn't... That wasn't Dementium. That was... Just a good game in its own right. Um, nope. Drawing a blank. Leave it with me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 217 videos to look through. It'll be fine. I'll find it. And... Quick. So, the last thing I wanted to bring up, actually, regarding this game, is... This... Uh... The psychiatric evaluation at the end. I don't know how hard I want to go with that. Because there's a lot of... There's a lot of shotgun statements in there. Like, um... Certainly responds well to flattery. I'm pretty sure most people in chat would be like, <laughs> That's me. And that's not necessarily tailored to you. Also... I don't think that I do respond well to flattery. I go, <laughs> well, <laughs> shucks, <laughs> you know me. Um, that just sounded like a lot of hyperventilating into a mic, um, which is actually what I do when complimented. So, uh, hey, there you go. <laughs> That's me. But yeah, a lot of cold reading vibes from these sentences. Um, but, the last one down there, that's kind of what inspired me to come back and play this game again. Might be worth going back to the start, re-examining with benefit of what we know now. Basically, go play through the game, knowing the twist in the tale, and... Oh yeah, that's why that guy said that! You know? Pretty cool. Uh, I'm just gonna have to keep talking and making sounds, because apparently there's a refrain to this song. <laughs> it's like I only heard it five minutes ago. Let's... Let's go again. Um... Alright, there we go. Fun thing, the only time one of these videos was legitimately content claimed when I uploaded my Let's Play was when I showed off the UFO ending. Konami was having none of that. Um, 
even though I had to go back and like just to be safe edit out bits of music to be like no no Konami's got nothing on this um oh heck yeah Adele is singing let's go with that I do have um I'm pretty sure I have a little singing version of this sprite hang on do I Uh, I don't, actually. Wild. I've got, uh, I've got uh, eight different versions of this penguin sleeping. Two more, three more going to sleep. But I don't have any, um, I don't have any of her singing. I'm sure there is one. I just have to dig it out. But not right now. I'm going to do that. And there we go. That is... That is the end of Silent Hill Shattered Memories. At least on stream. It continues on in our minds. I don't quite know where I was going with that ending. Um, Lady Luna Phoenix, the next project is... I kind of know what I'm going to do next. Horror Game Monday? I, I, I got hit with a bit of inspiration while I was at work today. But we'll see if I feel like doing that. What do I feel like doing now? Um, do you know what? I don't really have anything that I can do for just an hour. It's Kingdom Hearts, isn't it? Damn it, Empirical Woodlands, you caught me. All three mainline games and the the mobile game and the, the gacha game that probably exists. Um... The Kingdom Hearts, the coloring book. There's probably going to be plot in that. I want to say Kingdom Hearts is one of the ones where... Actually, yeah, you're going to have to buy all of the the, the add-on content for plot. Oh, yeah, that's it. I bought two new emotes. And the other one has not been delivered yet. But, uh, yeah, if you check it out, if we go... Um, over over here, we have Adelie Cozy, wrapped up in a blanket. And um, the other one, I'll show you the other one, when it arrives. Anyways, I, I think we're going to cut the stream a little early today, because I don't know what else I can do in an hour. And I'm going to regret it. As soon as I go and I make a cup of tea and um, get some food. But, like, I don't know. <laughs> it, it seems fitting just to end Shattered Memories at the point of Shattered Memories. Um, and then I can go and check, like, the content claim system on my Twitch channel and panic. Just to make sure that everything is fine and not identified. Who do we raid today, chat? I think... Well, oh, oh, I see, Mr. Empirical Woodland. I see why you selected Kingdom Hearts. I see why you chose to do that. We're going to go raid Holly, who is currently playing Kingdom Hearts. I don't know why I did that on this screen. Hey, check it out. It's the ending screen. Now we're going to go and raid um, Holly. I have played Kingdom Hearts. Played the first one. Got the second one. Never played it. Um... Come back on Wednesday, Thursday. We're going to keep on going with Minish Cap. Finish off Fashion Police Squad Friday. And then question marks on Monday. Join the Discord. It'll be in the the, the schedule right there. Um, yes, thank you very much for the stream. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. And enjoy sleep when you go there. So until next time, goodbye.